You are listening to the Try. Order Transmissions. Weekly Trek, Episode 3, First Week of May, 2018. Welcome, everybody, to Weekly Trek, a Tricorder Transmissions podcast weekly show covering the news and current events in the Star Trek universe. I'm your rotating host, Marty Ali, and I'm joined by my Reading Trek co-host, William Conlon. Will, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful. We, uh, it's it's sad. We don't have that much to talk about. There wasn't any Trek news this week, was there? Oh, there's, it's such a slow news week this week. Um, where I think it's just going to be a 10-minute show, maybe real quick. (laughs) You know. <laughs> no, there was so much news to talk about this week. We have a lot to discuss, so um, why don't we get right into it? Because this, after all, is our, our new show. It's going to be the 6 o'clock news, but for Star Trek. So, Will, why don't you kick it off? What's happening in the Star Trek universe? All right, well, first off, we have a quick announcement about Star Trek Las Vegas, uh, which is everyone's favorite Star Trek convention. We have four new additions to the guest list. They are now up to 94 guests and counting. We have Jane Brock from Star Trek Discovery, very excited that she's coming. And we have classic favorites from Deep Space Nine, James Darren, Andrew Robinson, and Hannah Hattai. So the DS925 celebration continues to grow. Oh, that's amazing. I can't wait for Las Vegas. What are we, under under 90 days now by the time this gets out? I think so. I am counting every single day. I've got a countdown clock on my phone, so I can't wait to see all my friends and see all these amazing stars, and there's so many new faces because we have all these disco people coming. Yeah, it's going to be great. I can't wait. Absolutely. So, Marty, I, I've heard there's some news in the comic book world. You want to talk to us about that? Yeah, there's there's been a bit of a shakeup at IDW. One of the lead editorial directors for the Star Trek comics is actually leaving IDW. Sarah Gatos is leaving IDW to take on the role of editorial director of licensed publishing at Unai Press. Um, she has worked on Star Trek comics since 2013 and overseen such popular titles as Star Trek Boldly Go, Starfleet Academy, Star Trek The Next Generation, Me or Broken the Star Trek Waypoint Anthology, and the launch of the Discovery Comics, and something we covered on Reading Track, the Star Trek crossovers of Green Lantern, as well as a crossover of Planet of the Apes. So what this means for Star Trek Comics is that we won't have as many series running. Uh, Boldly Go is ending at issue number 18, um, and I believe that's the last we're going to see of the Kelvin Universe comics for quite a while As well, Star Trek New Visions is set to end with number 24. Um, But the Star Trek Discovery comics will continue under the supervision of staff writer Kirsten Beyer. Yeah, and we got a chance to talk to Kirsten back at uh, WonderCon in March, and she's very excited of all the potential coming in the Star Trek comic books. Uh, I'm really curious to see what kind of move this takes uh, in the future. I'm happy to hear that there's more Discovery coming, but one thing I really hope this doesn't mess up is the new TNG Mirror Universe series, which I think really just exploded onto the scene, and I'm hoping there's a lot more coming for that. Well, I've got news for you. Star Trek The Next Generation Mirror Broken will continue in Star Trek The Next Generation Through the Mirror in May and Star Trek The Next Generation Terra Incognita in June. Excellent. IDW's plans for The Next Generation or any other past Star Trek series beyond that are unknown. Dun dun dun! Well, we will see as time goes on. I'm looking forward. I'm sure there will be plenty more comic books coming regardless what, what series they come from. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll, uh, they'll think of something to put out. Absolutely. Well, we have a new episode of the popular Netflix series, The Toys That Made Us, and it's going to be all about Star Trek toys, premiering on Netflix on May 25th. Uh, The Toys That Made Us is a series that does deep dives into popular toy series, including He-Man, Barbie, G.I. Joes, and Star Wars. Uh, They are going to be talking about the 50-year history of Star Trek toys, starting with Mego and going all the way up to the uh, upcoming McFarlane toys based on Discovery. Uh, I am personally thrilled about this because, of course, you know, if you're a Star Trek fan, you have a deep connection to all the merchandise that came out with Star Trek. 
one of my earliest memories uh, is having a Enterprise D from TNG, and I, I loved that toy. I played with it until until I broke it, I think. So how do you feel about this, Marty? I am so excited. Uh, I've watched every episode of this show so far, um, the Star Wars episode and the... Um, the He-Man episode were some of the standout moments of this show. Um, have you had a chance to watch it? I've seen the Star Wars episode, and I thought it was just really thrilling. I love that they did the reenactments and the, and the history. I mean, everybody knows the toys, but to learn those those little intricacies and how they came about, I think it's really a fascinating thing for us pop culture junkies. Yeah, they get they get really deep into it too. It's it's wonderful. I can't wait for this one. This is one I'm going to watch um, the day it, the day it launches on Netflix. Same here. We'll be talking about it. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about that McFarland toy you just mentioned? Yeah, I'm really excited for this. So um, uh, there is an article out from Trek Corps about McFarland's Star Trek Discovery Phaser. Uh, personally, I think this is a great deal. They are offering it for pretty much the most affordable price I've seen for a Star Trek toy in a while, thirty four ninety nine price point. Wow, uh, that's great. And it looks visually stunning, especially compared to, say, the Innovos one, which is running $500 plus. Uh, it has the orange tip on it, and I'm sure our... Um, our deep cosplay fans will be spray painting those the instant they get them. But otherwise, I mean, it is such high quality. It has a removable power clip with LED lights. It has the action trigger, the removable hand phaser, the barrel rotates. This is really a truly quality piece. Um, and even in the article on Trek Corps, they compared it to the McFarlane Enterprise phase, uh, phase pistol, which I have one of those. Uh, and I'm, I'm blown away by the quality of that as well. So really big props to McFarlane. Farland on putting out this high quality product and I'm sure we're going to see a lot of these at STLV. Yeah, this is going to be a great accessory to have with your cosplay um, especially at that price point, $35. That's great. Now there is one note here which is going to be interesting, especially for you and me Marty, since uh, we're in California. Uh, McFarland is prohibited from distributing and retailing its items in California, Connecticut, Kansas, and New York due to specific and restrictive uh, imitation firearm laws in those states. So uh, call your friends in uh, Las Vegas and Texas and uh, have them ship you one as soon as they go on the market. Maybe they'll be for sale at Star Trek Las Vegas. Yeah, exactly. But then again, you got to get your spray paint on and do all your alter alterations, get your cosplay photos going. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I don't have a Discovery costume yet, though. I've got my Disco t-shirt. That's going to be my Discovery cosplay this year. Nice. So speaking of Discovery, we uh, recently got our Captain Pike. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what the original Captain Pike's son has to say about that? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Um, Anson Mount was recently cast to play Captain Christopher Pike, and the son of Jeffrey Hunter, who played the original Christopher Pike, said he's really happy about Anson Mount. He's been watching Anson Mount and really has the qualities that you need in Pike. You knew Pike is a serious captain. Uh, my dad played him as a guy who was burned out, who really cared way too much about his crew, and who was tested by the old Telosians. Bruce Greenwood was wonderful as Pike. He really had those qualities as a mentor. I think Anson Mount is going to have the same qualities that those two guys did. He's got some big shoes to fill, and I think he's going to be really successful. Yeah, I love I love that we got this comment from him because Jeffrey Hunter sadly died at a very young age. If you know, if he hadn't had an accident, I believe on set, which um, led to a brain aneurysm, uh, he would probably still be alive today. He'd be about the same age as William Shatner. So uh, we sadly did not get a chance to hear his opinion on this. But knowing that his uh, his son is out there and supportive of Star Trek, I think that's really fantastic. I agree. Yeah, I think it's wonderful. No hard feelings when recasting any of these roles. Exactly. I'm still waiting for the, the the announcement of who they've cast as Spock, but I'm I'm guessing they're going to hang on to that until either a San Diego Comic Con or Star Trek Las Vegas. Yeah, I'm betting it's going to be a big announcement, and you know I'm I'm 100 supportive of recasting. I. I don't think Leonard would have a problem with this. I look at this the same way I look at James Bond and other franchises that have done it. It's just a way Doctor to con who. Doctor Who, exactly. It's a way to continue a franchise going and I think anyone who who sticks to that that mentality of, you know, all or nothing on the original, they're just going to get left behind in the dust and we don't want to see Star Trek get left behind. Nope, certainly don't. 
So we mentioned William Shatner a couple of minutes ago. Uh, Mr. Shatner is set to uh, take a visit to Ticonderoga, New York, uh, where the famous Star Trek set tour, uh, which was created by James Cowley, uh, it's a amazing recreation of the original sets uh, of Star Trek, the original series. Uh, Mr. Shatner is going to be doing uh, two special appearances on May 4th and 5th, so that's coming up really soon. Uh, the price is a little expensive. It's $1,500 for a 45-minute exclusive Ooh. event. It includes a question-and-answer session and a photo op. Uh, and then Mr. Shatner is on a tour, of you, a tour with you through the original series uh, set. So um, that's pricey, but if you are a diehard and you want to be standing on the TOS bridge with Captain Kirk himself, that is your opportunity. Will be? Will he be wearing his green wrap? I highly doubt that. The last time I saw him, he was wearing sandals and, and Bermuda shorts. Nice. Um, that doesn't include an autograph. Uh, Shatner's signature at this event will cost you an extra $80. So if you want the whole experience, you're looking at... Fifteen hundred eighty dollars. Ouch! That is pricey. A little, a little pricey for me, but I can see how this is appealing because it's going to be a very intimate experience on the set of the TOS show. I'm interested to see what kind of response this gets when you look at, say, uh, STLV, where you have the original series bridge they do there, and you can get a photo op with uh, Shatner on the bridge for, I believe, $300. So uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, what kind of response this gets. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't had a chance to visit the Ticonderoga set yet, but I, I'm hoping I can take a trip at least once soon. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit out of the way uh, when it comes to where you'd expect something Star Trek to be related. You'd think New York, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, but um, yeah, it's uh, something I've been wanting to get to, and I certainly hope to in the coming years as well. Yeah, and if any of our Star Trek friends are willing to go in on a, a group a group thing, you know, hit us up. Well, it's uh, definitely something you want to see before you die. And uh, speaking of death, we actually have an interesting uh, bit of Star Trek news in the death world. Uh, a neuroscientist uh, has discovered what happens to the brain when we die and then realized that Star Trek figured it out first. So um, recently, uh, a study came out about how the brain actually processes death in the way that the neurons fire. Uh, and the way that it is described now by scientists is actually the exact same way that Dr. Crusher described it in the episode where Tasha Yar passes away in Skin of Evil from TNG Season 1. So, um, very interesting bit of news out there. Just another thing where Star Trek kind of predicted something in the future that, that we didn't know about. So what are your thoughts on this, Marty? I mean, we've got iPads, we've got neuroscience... They're working on transporter technology. I it's it's it blows my mind that that science inspires fiction and then fiction then in turn inspires science. This continues to reinforce my theory that Gene Roddenberry was a time traveler. Perhaps, perhaps he was. Well, speaking of the great bird of the galaxy, Eagle Moss has uh, some announcements that they've made. Marty, do you want to tell us about that? Absolutely. There's new Eagle Moss discovery ships. Um, on the way, they've already released two ships, the USS Shenzo and the USS Discovery, both of which I have. One is on my desk next to me right now. Uh, they were showing off the new ships at their booth in um, Destination Star Trek in Germany. Um, and the the banner includes a photo of the new redesigned USS Enterprise that we saw in the season finale of Discovery Season 1. Um, also on display was a Klingon bird of prey, which looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, so cool. Um, the Shepherd class Kernala mm -hmm. in the second episode of Discovery Battle at the Binary Stars, as well as a Terran Empire Shenzo, which looks like it's just the Shenzo with the Terran Empire logo painted. You'd think there'd be a few extra phaser banks on there. Yeah, also, also on display at Destination Germany was the... Uh, the plaques from both the Walker class Shenzo and the Crossfield class Discovery, which I'm assuming will be a special issue to subscribers. 
Yes, indeed. And I love looking close at the um, at the names on there because, of course, they have all the great mentions of the cast of the crew members all the way down to Gene Roddenberry. So these are really awesome pieces. I'm sure a lot of fans Those are going to be have collector's them. items. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're going to have them on their walls. There was also a mention of a tardigrade figure, but they didn't have any pictures. I'm really curious to see what that looks like. Maybe that's going to be one of the like free gifts for subscribers. Yeah. I, I am so excited for the Enterprise, too. I, I think it's absolutely beautiful. I'm glad we're past all that controversy from the last couple of weeks. Um, I'm just I'm thrilled by it. Speaking of the new Enterprise, um, there were some familiar things shown in the little sneak peek we got at Season 2. Um, Will, do you want to talk about any of that? Yes, indeed. Well, this was just a absolute blowout, and we're getting into our, our biggest pieces of news here because uh, we got a oh, yes. great, great teaser of the second season of Discovery entering production. It's a two-minute long video that you can see all over the internet. I mean, this just blasted on onto the web and people went crazy. Uh, people are already doing screen by screen grabs. I've done several myself to look at this. We get hints of the uh, gorgeous uh, red and gold and blue uniforms that we're going to see on the Constitution class ship. There's a uh, screen grab of drawings where you see the scants, uh, where you see a dress version with leggings. Uh, and then we have a close-up shot of Michael Burnham entering room 3F125-1701, which if you uh, all are eagle-eyed in the original series, that is Mr. Spock's room on the Enterprise. Uh, we saw a close-up of some aliens getting makeup applied to them. We saw a close-up of the Enterprise logo. And we saw some blueprint shots in there. So, I mean, there is a lot to look Blueprints at here. Blueprints of, of Laurel's Garden, no less. Laurel's Garden. There's a, a kind of a subtle Section 31 bridge slash lab. So it looks like we might see a Section yes. 31 ship at some point. In the in the blueprints, there is some Section 31 mentioned so, oh, this has me really excited. And I love this green screen shot of uh, Doug Jones' Saru, like, looking down. I, I can't wait to see what, what they're doing with all this. I love the, the little shots we get of the, the original colored uniform. So there's one where the seamstress is working on what looks to be Captain Pike's uniform with the, the gold braids around the sleeve. Um, it has the black the black collar around it, almost like the, the undershirt, but it still maintains that very Discovery-esque kind of style they've got going while making it very familiar and in line with what we already have seen. And I think they're absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I was I was really excited to see this because it's kind of the bridge, you know? It's the bridge from the Enterprise jumpsuits to uh, where we wind up with Captain Kirk in just a few years. Exactly. Oh, and there's also a shot of a of a uh, insignia badge on one of the uniforms, mm -hmm. and it's the familiar solid insignia instead of the kind of split version that we've had for Discovery for so long. Yeah, I like that. It kind of reinforces the idea that we're seeing kind of a Starfleet in um, in transformation. In you know, yeah. it's 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 times are changing and things are advancing. We've never so. really, except aside from the very sudden changes they made from from post. TNG um, to like TNG movies and Deep Space Nine, we've never really seen kind of an overlapping costume style like that before. So this is actually pretty cool. That yeah, I am so excited. This this is just going to be great. And and not to be outdone by Star Trek Discovery's big news, Paramount put out a whole bunch of news. So Marty, why don't you tell us about oh the my, upcoming years they, at Paramount? Did they ever? Paramount has recently announced that they are in production on not one, but two Star Trek movies. Um, details are very scarce at this point. They've known for some time that multiple story treatments are being battered around. Um, there's the 2016 George Kirk story, the Quentin Tarantino Star Trek tale, um, of, among others. We don't have a timetable for these movies yet, but we do have... A director announced for the first one, 
which I think is fantastic. Do you want to tell us about the director for Star Trek IV? This is so exciting. This is really great because we're, we're breaking barriers here. Uh, S.J. Clarkson is going to be the first female director in Star Trek motion picture history. Uh, she has uh, considerable science fiction experience currently working on uh, Netflix on uh, Jessica Jones. Uh, she has worked on Dexter, Bates Motel, Orange is the New Black. Uh, she's doing Marvel's The Defenders right now. Oh my God. So, oh, uh, fantastic shows. Uh, fantastic shows, fantastic storylines, well directed. So I think she's going to just do an amazing job with this. Uh, we still don't know how it's going to happen, but we are going to see Chris Pine's character reunite with Chris Hemsworth's George Kirk, uh, some sort of time travel oh, storyline. Yes, they have announced that uh, Chris Hemsworth. Uh, is signed on for this one. I am seriously keeping my fingers crossed that we're going to have a Guardian of Forever storyline in a Star Trek movie. Uh, oh my gosh. So I just think that's awesome. And then on top of this, we've got these two Kelvin timeline films announced. Just today, uh, the day that we recorded this, we got some breaking news that Quentin Tarantino's Star Trek is very much alive and separate from these films. They are announcing that after Quentin Tarantino's current film is released, that's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is coming out next summer, uh, he may actually write and direct a uh, Star Trek film, which would be the start of a whole new series of Star Trek movies. Uh, he is, oh my gosh. He has already expressed um, his love of the TNG episode Yesterday's Enterprise and his feelings that that, <gasps> that plot line could actually lead to an entire film based on that. <gasps> so, yeah, I mean, gasp, 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 because... Are I, we going to get a 24th century Star Trek movie? I, I think there may be a possibility. And knowing Tarantino, if there's anybody who can deliver it, I think it's him. That's really exciting. Um, I... It looks like the Tarantino Star Trek story is almost going to be like how Star Wars is doing theirs with their kind of anthology movies telling like one-off tales here and there. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be and great? They, they have the main line of films as well. Yeah, I think that would be so great and it would be so smart because it could open the floodgates to a whole new era of directors. You know, if Tarantino wants to step in and do this, then who else could you see come in and do a Star Trek you movie? Could, you could tell you could tell Star Trek stories with characters that we haven't even met yet, which would be amazing. Um, it could be like, you know, the Star Trek New Frontiers book series where they just went in a whole different way. Exactly. And this world is so vast and there's so much to talk about. I think we... I, I'm just unbelievably excited right now. This last week has shown how bright the future is for the Star Trek franchise. I, I feel like just a couple of years ago, people might have been worried at where it was heading, but look at where we are now. How can you not be excited? Regardless of how you feel about Discovery or the Kelvin timeline, it's a very exciting time to be a Star Trek fan. We have so much new content on the way. It's, it's, I don't think we've ever, I mean, okay, they have in the 90s, they had the series and the movies coming out as well, but since, like, the late 90s, this hasn't ever been a thing that we've... We've either had a movie here and there, a show, maybe, you know. Exactly, yeah, but, I mean, look at how much is coming out. It's just, it's so broad and so exciting, and, and there's so much diversity coming into it. I, I know it was already discussed on a previous... Um, episode of Weekly Trek, but uh, casting of people like Tig Notaro in Discovery. The, the future for Star Trek is so bright, and I'm so excited, and, and we're really happy that you guys are listening to us and joining along in this, and, and just as excited as we are. Will, I have a question for you. Yes. Is there any one-off story, um, say say you're, you're writing a, a new Star Trek anthology movie, is there one particular story... Um, could have already been told, could have not been told yet, story or character or plot device that you would like to focus on writing your Star Trek movie? You know, Marty, there is there is one thing that I would really like to see, and I'm going to just say it right now. USS Stargazer. Oh, good choice. A young Captain Picard, a young Ensign Picard on the USS Stargazer. He's got hair. You've got Jack Crusher. Um, one of the books we're going to be covering on Reading Trek in the not-too-distant future is a book called Reunion, which is about that time. That was one of my favorite Trek novels growing up because it gave you that, um, that history of the Stargazer and those early years, and you see how Picard becomes the great leader that he is. That's fantastic. How about you? That's a great choice. 
you know, I actually would love a a one-off tale about the Romulans. Um, there's so much we don't know about the Romulans. I think specifically, I would like to focus on the exchange between the Romulans and the Klingons when the Klingons got the Romulan cloaking technology. Nice. Yeah. That would, they, they, you could see a lot of politics in that. It could be almost like a political thriller, a right? A political thriller, yeah. Which is something that, I mean, they've done before on the TV shows, but I don't think we've really had that in the movies. Maybe Star Trek VI was a political thriller, kind of. Yeah, yeah, a lot of that um, uh, Soviet Union uh, intrigue in there, but I think there's there's so much there, there's so much untapped potential in um, the Romulans. They could shout out the word collusion a few times, you know, make it relevant. (laughs) Fake news. Um, So let's talk about uh, what's coming up in the Tricorder Transmissions Network in the coming week. Um, We've got a pretty big milestone uh, that's dropping. Marty, you want to talk about that? Yeah, we just dropped our 300th episode celebration on the Supplemental Logs, which was a collection of little little memos, little um, little shout-outs here and there from all of our Tricorder hosts, um, past and present. Um, And they did make an announcement in that episode about something that's that's coming back to the tricorder transmissions that's been missing for a while. So that was pretty exciting. Um, we also have more episodes of Disco Trek on the way. I think the next one we are talking about is going to be um, about Saru, the character of Saru. Nice. Um, I'm not sure what Polytrex has upcoming, but they just dropped their LGBTQ plus focused episode. And Trek Profiles is uh, doing an expose on Miss Amy Nelson from the Trek FM podcast network. Um, Will, what do we have coming up on Reading Trek? Well, Reading Trek, we're really excited because we are continuing our Star Trek Invasion mega series. Uh, Star Trek Invasion, if you don't know, is a four-part book series that was put out in the mid-90s, which bridged uh, all four series that existed at that point. You have a storyline that covers TOS, TNG, DS9, and Voyager. Uh, We have already dropped our first episode on that, so you can go over to Reading Trek and listen to that. Our second book is TNG's edition. It's all about Picard's crew dealing with this extremely hostile enemy coming from the Delta Quadrant to take over Federation, Klingon, and Romulan space. Uh, We're really excited to present this next book, Uh, so... Uh, read in on that. And we've also got our ongoing voicemail contest. If you leave a message on the Tricorder Transmissions uh, answering machine uh, with a comment about the show, you are entered into a drawing to win a brand new copy of the autobiography of Jean-Luc Picard, which we will be covering in a future episode. Yes, we will. Very exciting stuff coming up. Lots of stuff happening on the Tricorder Transmissions Network. You can also uh, support the network by becoming a patron by visiting patreon.com slash the Tricorder Transmissions. We have lots of goodies coming up for our Patreon supporters. We are actually about to release um, an exclusive Patreon button that will be mailed out to all Patreon supporters. And I've seen it. It's beautiful. You're going to want one to wear in Vegas at our party that's going to be amazing. Yes, indeed. I just saw the I saw the first printing of it as well. I can't wait to get my hands on mine, and I think it's just going to be a real treasure for people. And they're going to be going around Vegas saying, "Where did you get that?" So you do exactly. not want to be you do not want to be left out on that. No, you don't. Um, Patreon supporters also get exclusive access to unedited shows, interviews, exclusive Patreon only chats, which we are going to be starting up. More of those chats very, very soon. So if you'd like to be a part of that, head on over to patreon.com slash the Tricorder Transmissions. It only takes a dollar a month, and you get all this amazing stuff, so why not? A dollar a month. Come on, people. That's that's the steal. That's the steal of the century. The 23rd century, that is. Yeah. All right, but I think that's all the Trek news we have to share with you this week. If you'd like to continue the conversation, you can visit us online at Weekly Trek. Um, as well as online at the tricordertransmissions.com. Personally, you can find me at Time Travel Marty on Twitter, as well as in the unofficial Star Trek Las Vegas Facebook convention group. Will, where can people find you on the socials? 
Well, you can find me in the unofficial Facebook group as well. That is led by our wonderful Star Trek guru, Heather Barker, our Tricorder Transmissions leader, Jeff Hewlett, and our good friend and STLV buddy, Jesse Okendo. That is a fantastic group to go on if you want to get to know 5,000 amazing Star Trek fans. Get right on there and join up. Uh, you Sounds can also. A wonderful community. Yeah, it's so great, and I can't wait to see all of them in less than 100 days. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at William G. Conlin. Uh, please send me a message, and let's get the Star Trek conversation going. Uh, once again, this is a Weekly Trek, where we have a rotating collection of Tricorder Transmissions hosts telling you the Star Trek news. It's like the news at 6, only it's all Star Trek. All right, we'll be back next week with more news from the Trek universe, but until then, live long and prosper. Live long and prosper.